Hey everyone, welcome to the Just Pick Something podcast where we discuss movies and TV shows. My name is Jakes and I'm here with my co-host Franco. This episode we're going to be talking about Hocus Pocus 2, the sequel to the cult classic Hocus Pocus from 1993. This sequel came out in the year 2020. It was directed by Anne Fletcher, stars Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, Kathy Najimy, and at the time of this episode can be streamed on Disney+. Plus. Before we start the discussion of the actual movie, we're going to be doing what we usually do and talking about other things we've just been watching recently. The first few episodes of like House of the Dragon and like She-Hulk, a little bit of discussion of the new season of Cuphead that came out, a bit of a follow up to one of the episodes we did before. You know, just check out the time codes in the description. But uh, yeah, uh, what's been on your mind, Franco? What have you been watching? Um, I've been watching a couple things. Nothing like too crazy. Uh, main thing that I probably watched this week is out of She-Hulk. Oh man, I mean this so far has been just release season for a lot of things right you know and like um house of the dragon on hbo max oh yeah i watched the first episode of that yeah she hulk on disney plus i mean we have the sandman show come out on netflix other things that have come out on other streaming services and like the harley quinn show yep. yeah man it's been a lot a lot of stuff to digest over the <laughs> over the last few weeks <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah for sure so you, you've um you've seen the she hulk show yeah i have have you yeah actually i just watched the second episode yesterday okay yeah so i've I've very much been enjoying it. I think so far, it's probably in contention for my favorite Marvel series from the like they're, they're from the Disney Plus era. Yeah, I agree. And especially in terms of the Marvel shows that have come out on Disney Plus, I think this is probably already higher up than, say, Falcon the Winter Soldier show. Yeah, so that one, um, I want to say my favorite were probably WandaVision and Loki. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's some fumbling in regards to both of those shows that I'm like, yeah, you know, they're fine. But but this one, I feel like there's not as much serialized weight on it the way that those had. Mm, yeah. Right? Where, like, those are, like, oh, these are, like, monumental, like, series that are trying really hard to, like, sell this narrative. And with She-Hulk, it's more a more down-to-earth style show mm-hmm. that I think will benefit it in the long term. And it's easier to digest and less likely to be prodded at in, like, a narrative sense. Well, I mean, it starts off way more casual. Like, the tone is way more just casual, fun, not a serious type of show. You know, like, going into it, you can tell this is going to be very lighthearted, very fun to just enjoy. The comedy is pretty strong, especially in the first episode. (laughs) With the comment of, uh, what is it, um, She-Hulk's character making, uh, trying to think of, like, how Steve Rogers is probably a virgin. Or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so, so I like how ca- I, I do like the vibe mm. of it. It's kind of what uh, so what I'm hoping for is that like I had a similar vibe going into like the first two episodes of Miss Marvel, where I was like, oh man, this is like re- gonna be really good because of like the style and the tone, and like they're so much more down to earth than these other shows were. And then Miss Marvel was like world ending threat, and I was like, God, you just ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel so far that. Some of the Marvel shows that have come out on Disney Plus, all uh, most of them start off relatively strong, and then near the end, it starts to get a little like not what I would have expected or wanted from the show. Like WandaVision is an example of that, where it, w- it didn't go in a bad direction or end in a bad direction. It just kind of like fizzled my enjoyment of it near the end. And yeah. She Hulk, pretty great. I really like. Uh, the actress who's playing Jen- Jennifer Walters, I think she's a lot of fun. The interaction between her and her cousin, you know, Bruce Banner, the Hulk, are just great. And I really want to see where this is going to go. I really hope it, we get into more uh, courtroom scenes, like lawyer, kind of like daredevil courtroom scenes, you know? I think I, I want to say that you're going to be disappointed. In I want to say that the creator was like, I'm really bad at doing courtroom scenes. Mm. So I think we're more likely going to get scenes like we did in the second episode where she just, like, talks to people and they, like, express, like, the issues that they're having. Yeah, oh, that's fair. I, I hope they still try, though. Which I think, which is engaging. I think I think the first episode, no, the second episode had uh, stuff with Abomination was engaging, and it has to do with legal stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, for sure. I, I just feel like if we're going to have a show with, you know, a superhero who's also a lawyer, kind of like um, Daredevil, we get some kind of like courtroom semi-drama 
at some point, you know? And uh, if your comment about the director saying he's not good at making courtroom scenes, I hope they still try near the end. Part of me just worries that they're going to be like, oh, let's save that for season two, you uh, know? I, yeah, I don't I don't think so. I think I think we can expect that. I feel like she's like, she is working for like the big, big money law firm. Mm, yeah. It, it's going to be weird too, because it's a weird dynamic to play where like, I'm sure they will like address it. <laughs> or, or whatever, you know? Yeah. I like this show so far. I hope it continues to be good. Um, I feel like if anybody's listening to us, they already know that we're not gonna agree with a lot of the online hate that's based around this show like we're very much not that vibe <laughs> yeah no this show has quickly become a target of uh, disapproval hate for the expected reasons of like female main lead you know centered uh, story centered around a female superhero um people digging and tearing apart the dialogue or the comments or which i hope it doesn't just continue to escalate to the point where people start making death threats against the actresses or the other members of oh. Cast. Aside from all that hate, I'm pretty entertained and enjoying She-Hulk so far, you know? All right, so another a thing we could discuss since you've seen the first episode is that um, the House of the Dragon show that came out on HBO Max. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, have you watched Game of Thrones? Or have you read the books? Have you seen most of that show? For Game of Thrones, I've watched all of the sh- all of the previous series, and then I read the first book and a half. I'm really bad at keeping track of when I read books. Mm. Uh, I'm super busy lately, so like reading is like on a very low part of the totem pole of responsibilities that I give myself, which is unfortunate. I love reading. Everybody should read. Um, but I haven't, I had never really got super into reading that series, Mm -hmm. but I don't know, like the lore and the history, like the, I'm sure people are like, Oh my God, the new series has this character and you read about him here, or he was name dropped here. (laughs) And I was like, I do not know. I do not care. <laughs> well, I don't know about that one. So I have read some of the book series, right? Um, I listened to okay. the first two books on audiobook. If anybody wants to a good place for them to easily access audiobooks in the United States, there is an app you can download called Libby, which you can connect to the public library system and just check out free audiobooks of the same quality as you would find on Audible for free. There might be a wait time. Just download Libby. This is not a sponsorship or anything. I just really like free accessible like books and the library system in the United States needs more like help and support. So yeah, go to your local library, renew and make a library card, download that app and you can just read a bunch of books. <laughs> so going back to Game of Thrones, there is a YouTuber that I really like called Alt Shift X and okay. they do a lot of Game of Thrones content. They do other content that I really enjoy, like their All Tomorrow's The Future of Humanity video. I'll post some links in the description to like have easy accessibility to their channel. But yeah, if you want a good Game of Thrones YouTuber who will easily and concisely break down all the different families, the lore, different events throughout the history of the Game of Thrones you know, lore universe, I can't recommend them enough. There are other YouTubers that do similar things that sometimes collaborate with that are independently really good as well, like and but going into the house of the dragon there was a bunch of names that i never really recognized like the obvious ones are like oh this person's a targaryen a baratheon like i recognize the last names not the first names if that makes sense yeah when they were like damon targaryen or whatever i was like i don't remember that damon guy yeah um, i recognize his face <laughs> <laughs> i mean matt smith but, yeah, i love matt smith oh yeah. my gosh i love matt smith i, I you're you you watch doctor who i did i watched doctor who since like I, I caught on it a little late but i enjoy you know all the different doctors like of course david Tennant, christopher eccleson matt smith peter capaldi they, they were it's a fun show you know yeah, I, so i've i started really hardcore watching it when matt smith Smith became the doctor and he was like my doctor for like a good chunk of time I think now it switched over to being Capaldi but for pretty much like seven years out of my who my doctor who life it was it was Matt it was heavy Matt Smith really I, I was um I got on the show with Tenet Tenet was my doctor that I really like and still is probably my favorite but um a very close second would maybe be like I don't know Jodie Comer I really like her doctor, even though um Whitaker, you mean the name Whitaker Jody Whitaker? Oh, yeah, Jody Whitaker. What if I said Comer? Where do I get that name from? Ah man. Oh, Jody Comer is uh, an English actress who is ba 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 really pretty. Oh wait, I know where we um, got that from because we uh, the last duel we that sh- uh, movie we rec- we watched. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why that name was in my head. Jody Comer's great. I should watch more stuff with Jody Comer. <laughs> she was in Free Guy. Oh my god. 
<laughs> that was her. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I my bad, Jodie Whittaker. I confused two actresses. <laughs> I mean, first, real quick though, it's real quick tangent. Jodie Comer in Free Guy is insane. She's great in that movie. One, she's hilarious. But two, like she plays. I did not actually know that she played her like on screen avatar and then her real life person for like a hot second in that movie because they do a really good job of making her not look like herself. No, yeah, they, she looks completely how I wouldn't expect her to look like in that movie. And and so I'm like, I look at it and I'm like, yo, you did a really good job because you you felt like two different characters. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, uh, I, I like her performances in the role she gets cast in, you know? Like, I want to see more of Jodie Comer in more things, which she probably will, yeah. you know? Yeah, but yeah, Jodie Whittaker, mm -hmm. on the other hand, is also great. I like her in Doctor Who. Yeah. I wish her scripts were better. Yeah, my bad, Jodie Whittaker. You will never watch this or hear this, but <laughs> my bad. <laughs> no, she will. You know, she does. She'll hear that we like her in, in the in the role of the Doctor. We wish her show had some better scripts to it, but that's not her fault. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hey, welcome to the Doctor Who Club, where the Doctors sometimes get really good episodes and really bad ones. Yeah. you know, that's why I was like, like uh, David Tennant had quite a lot of bad episodes in his run yeah, too. Yeah, and then I like I I was talking to someone before. I was like, I really like Capaldi now like when he was coming out it was rough watching him oh i like <laughs> i really like the um what is it the cool uncle type of doctor that he ended up becoming near the end yes very much mm -hmm. he, he, but i feel like he was man he was dragged down by some characters that were still hanging around <laughs> i feel like in his early run they were still trying to figure out what to do with the uh Anna coleman uh she was oswin oswald but... yeah i just feel like they were still trying to figure out what to do with her like storyline and they were weren't really sure what how to run it or finish it off you know but uh i, I feel like she was yeah that, unfortunately it was an unfortunate thing where they they made her such a big part of the show that it was very difficult for them to not just like have that be a thing which is a shame because i liked some, uh, like her performances in the show when she was on it you know like i think she's a pretty yeah. good actress she's really good yeah i, I think she give her way too much flack for that kind of stuff mm -hmm. yeah but, but uh to, to go back to house of the dragon or oh yeah 100 we were going back to the other british show <laughs> or hot d as george R. R. martin has called the show <laughs> so talking about hot d um i quite like hot d i'm kind of excited to be back in the world of this universe you know i really like the lore the lore was always the funnest part to me about the game of thrones universe i think the first episode was great all the performances were wonderful it was moments of like harrowing like tense scenes oh my god when the queen starts to give birth jump it back and forth between the duel oh man harrowing yeah they did some really good stuff with that i was actively impressed with the first episode given how badly the main series had fallen off yeah yeah it's a shame because i feel like uh maybe there's people who feel like me where they were really into the show and like the universe and were very disappointed by the end of the game of thrones show initial run and we're kind of hoping or eager to get back into to it with a solid new show and i feel like this show particularly hot d had a lot of writing on it to be like if this show is good then we can keep it going if the show is bad then every subsequent project they have was going to be just probably canceled or just you know run into the ground or something like this was the make or break show for the this continuation of this world you know yeah i feel like that's this definitely has given a lot of the people involved uh more uh what's it called they they're definitely more likely to okay we can back another game of thrones project because i i think that they're all like yeah again like you said it was like if this doesn't work it's dead in the water yeah the book that this show is based off is a history book and if you want a really good explanation you could check out the alt shift x youtuber that i just mentioned a little bit ago i'll put the link to his channel in the comments or in the description but he has a great video explaining the history right. um I, I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes and uh where I'm watching it pretty much. But yeah, uh, other than that, I love, again, I love Matt Smith. He's like the only person of, of I think uh, there's a lot of great performances, but that's the only person that I know like their name. At. <laughs> well, you know, in House of the Dragon, there are some actors that I didn't initially recognize, like Patty Constantine, King Viserys. Patty Constantine was in Hot Fuzz as one of the policemen, if you remember that movie. Wow. 
That's crazy. Yeah, I like quite of like surprised to see them as King Viserys. And also um Otto Hightower. Okay. I recognize him from, you know, the Amazing Spider-Man. Okay, yeah. I just man, I did not I, yeah, I was blanking on people, I guess. <laughs> it was just those few ones, you know. I still don't recognize the rest of the uh the cast. There's a few ones that I was like, Oh, they did a really good job. I hope to see or check out their other work, you know? Yeah. With that, do you want to move on to the discussion of Cuphead or do you want to bring us something else no, up? That's fine, we can move on to Cuphead. All right, cool. So yeah, you watched the you said the first few episodes of Cuphead. Full disclosure, we talked. I talked to you about discussing this because we have discussed it in a previous podcast episode. Ooh. But I have only watched the first four episodes of the second season of Cuphead. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, I'm I'm gonna ask you because for me, I was watching the first few episodes and I was like, man, like I still appreciate the artistry and the craft and like the tone and all the things they're going for. But I was like, man, this is struggling to get through it. <laughs> <laughs> so are you asking me, Was did I struggle to get through it? Or no, like, do you think it's worth, like, I was like, more like how much, how worth it do you think it is to watch that the second season? Oh, so that's, it's kind of hard to say because all my feelings we had of our first initial review of the first season when it came out, if anyone listening to this wants to have like an episode by episode discussion about it, we released an episode a while back that you can check out on our YouTube channel. But going into this, I, I feel like this is just more of the things I liked from the first season. Like there's nothing like different, yeah. you know, it's, it's just more of what I liked from the first season. And this kind of goes back into what I was telling you about it from the last time where it feels like this show is made to be the kind of show where it will pop up on TV, you will watch an episode, enjoy it, and then go about your day, see it again pop up and you're like, oh yeah, I like that show, that episode I saw was good, watch another one, you know, just go about your day again like this feels like the era of tv on like the cartoon era of tv where i grew up on where i didn't have access to streaming you know because it didn't exist (laughs) when i was a kid so something would come on tv i would wait for it to air like every week i'd watch it like curse cowardly dog i'd be like oh i love this that show curse cowardly dog comes on like a nine great watch it loved it wait till next week or the week after right this feels like that kind of show like another SpongeBob type show. Yeah, I feel like if I was watching it on TV, I'd be a little bit more interested. I don't know. It's for me. It's just yeah. I was watching it. And I was like, man, like it, it felt like at points I was like, yeah, I'm not not really invested in any of the stuff that's going on. It would play in the background or something with mm-hmm. and like for one episode. One episode I entirely missed because I just like was just chilling and. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> just kind of like oh wait i for- i totally forgot to pay attention to that oh well <laughs> <laughs> which episode which is not it? to say it's bad it's just one of those things where it's um i guess like my exp- my hope for the second season was that i would be a little bit more engaged with it as opposed to you know being able to just let it go you know well there were certain episodes that i definitely found myself more engaged with like the episode i think it was three high seas adventure with the mermaid oh yes that one 100 <laughs> percent. Mm-hmm. yeah the actress from what we do in the shadows the voice of the mermaid she plays nausea on what we do in the shadows oh okay yeah i recognized it almost immediately because she just has this certain way of speaking that i find very appealing but also like very recognizable kind of like matt berry on that show yeah like as soon as I hear Matt Barry speak, I could tell it's Matt Barry. Like he has a very distinct way of speaking, and that I really enjoy. But yeah, for me, that High Seas Adventure episode was a really big highlight of the season. I was able, I watched it all, and I really appreciate the the previous review we did. The just the craftsmanshipness of it all. You didn't get to it because you just saw the first few episodes. But in the second half of the second season, we get a few more episodes with the Devil, which. He's such a great character that I always just love seeing more interactions with him and the main Cuphead and Mugman. But yeah, I don't know if this show is... It's not bad. I really enjoy it and we'll watch season three and I'm eager to see it continuing. But like, I don't know if there's anything to critically review it past what we've already have discussed about it. Yeah, you know? that's fair. Just because, yeah, I was I was watching it and I was like, yeah, like I have the same notes. I that's really really well animated they do some really fun they use some really fun techniques with i mean hey they they gave an explanation to that question you had from the previous season where you were wondering why 
go uh miss chalice could go intangible you know become a ghost oh yeah they did i was that, that was like the one thing that i was i was actually happy about <laughs> that the first episode was just immediately <laughs> a follow-up and i was like this is good i like this <laughs> yeah yeah no and it was great and um i mean the humor is still the same the adventure the wackiness is great so i guess with that i mean i'm gonna summarize my thoughts on cuphead season two since i don't think there's enough there for us to do an entire second review on the second season you know like it's good it's more of the first season everything i love from the first season's there all the music is there the charming like animation the use of mixed media in certain scenes the devil's a delight to see show up again all the voice acting is still strong like if you like the first season you're gonna like the second one just more more goodness and you know that's that's my thoughts on that (laughs) i'll probably throw it in on the background from time to time yeah i mean i think that is the best way to probably watch the show for someone at our point in life you know just a thing we can enjoy from time to time or have it on in the background there's certain episodes that are stand out and grab your attention you know yeah but yeah, I mean, we can briefly talk about one more thing, even since I was just reminded about it. Did you have you been watching what we do in the shadows? I am not currently watching that. Oh, man, what a shame. That's one of Maya and I's favorite shows right now. We're big fans of that show. OK, yeah, I don't have Hulu and I don't have FX. Right? Yeah, that's the show it's on or the channel it's on. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, I, I, that's nothing I can. Uh, <laughs> well, if no, if I... you ever do decide to get Hulu and it because I don't imagine this show ever making its way onto disney plus you know i can't recommend the show highly enough i think this is probably one of your a show for you to check out first you know like um of all the hulu exclusive shows that you might have heard about i think this is probably up there for one of the better ones to check out you know this one the bear um only murders in the building but this one is i think my current favorite comedy that's on hulu okay Man, I one Matt Berry always love him. I've I think I've seen most of his TV projects like uh, Toast of London, you know the IT Crowd. <laughs> this show, he's been in other uh, shows like cameo appearances, like in Archer and other things. Man, I I don't want to spoil a lot of this show because I think you're, you would enjoy it. It's Taika Waititi and it's a spinoff of the movie. Yeah. Of the same name, which was another really funny one. Did you see the movie? I have not also watched the movie. No. Oh man, see that's 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 another movie we've got to do. Now we have to add another thing to the list of things we want to discuss. Uh, the ever growing, never ending. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's what's it called? What we do in the shadows was the thing that put I think Taika Waititi on the map in terms of a just mainstream audience awareness. Yeah. Oh man, what a classic movie! It, uh, there's just a lot of the love about the show. So. I won't spoil it too much, but definitely check it out if you ever get Hulu. All right, yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've, I won't say that I've never watched any of it. I watched like a like half the first season. Uh, so like mm-hmm. I know like Guillermo and like some of those characters. Mostly Guillermo. He's like the main mm-hmm. one that I know. <laughs> oh man, Guillermo is delightful. I love his like will they won't they with Nondor the relentless. Even though that's definitely not ever gonna really happen, but they do play into that idea because um. Man, I, I I just seen so many good ships of Guillermo and Nandor online. So yeah, uh, before we actually move on, one last thing. I did pick up and start reading some comics that I've been on my shelf just collecting dust. Part of my like never-ending list of, oh, I'll read that eventually, you know? <laughs> like, um, yeah, I mean, I have, whew, I have like at least, I think like almost a year's worth of comics I'm behind on. Yeah, I, um, one of the comics I just uh, picked back up was the comic Low. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I loved it because the art, I mean, really struck me it was like you know really eye-catching the story seemed really interesting i was really blown away by the cover i really judged that book by its cover because <laughs> it would look really cool <laughs> gorgeous yeah and the art was just fantastic i picked up the first like three trade paperbacks i was really getting into it i had this feeling of like oh this kind of makes me feel like it's going for like a commentary on like global warming and things like that and then i never finished it for like three <laughs> four whole years and i it's just been sitting there waiting to be read and then i was like you know what i'm taking the train quite often nowadays this be a great place to read these comics and i finally have and it's fucking great i love it <laughs> oh man yeah no i'm i mean i just have to find the time to be actually able to read uh, and not be bothered <laughs> which is the hard part and then have the and then have the willpower to get off my freaking phone and just read stuff instead because that's mm-hmm. my biggest issue is like just getting just cutting off other distractions because i'm in the middle of one book like an actual actual like novel which one is it um um, look, it's been so long that I don't remember the name of it. 
Song of Achilles or something like that? Oh, yeah, Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Yeah, we talked about it briefly and how they, they yeah. came out the second book. Yeah, because I said I finished the book Cersei a while back now. Yeah. Like, it, it was like one of the only books I had finished for a while. So that was the book I would bring up whenever someone asked me if I was reading something. And there's a third, <laughs> I think they came, they're, either they're coming out with a third book about Medusa or they did come out with a third book about Medusa. Yeah, I, that'd be pretty cool. I'm not really sure of what's coming up next for that author, yeah. but that'd be pretty dope. I, I know my wife is a big fan. So I'm, I was in the middle of that and then I'm in the middle like yeah I read comic books I try to read comic books regularly I, I was a monthly buyer mm -hmm. now it's a little harder for me to get to the comic book store but yeah um yeah the right now if anybody ever asked me what like my favorite writer is in terms of modern day comics, it's Tom King. I don't know if you've read any of his stuff. I haven't, but I know of his stuff. I know like a lot of people like his yeah. work. You're talking Vision, Mr. Miracle, Omega mm -hmm. Man. Right now I have a Supergirl and Human Target in my box. I think also his Rorschach. So pretty mm -hmm. much I'm not caught up on any of his, uh, any of his like recent work at all. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I'm just like, on a hard kick for, on him, his stuff right now. And then there's a bunch of other series that have started that i need to get into and then like there's webtoons like lore olympus and oh man if, if i'm behind on books and i'm a little behind on comics i am further behind on webtoon comics i am like drastically behind on a lot of web comics i had been subscribed to yeah it's, it's unfortunate i was like i want to support these people the, the only way i can and i can't even do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah one of the i think the only uh webtoon comics that i've been still keeping up with is the weekly role which is just like someone's really funny illustrated D D campaign that seems to be going on you know yeah um it has like Buckethead with his like he's a paladin and he has a brick as his main weapon it's it's pretty great that's great it's um it's like a four panel comic so it's not like a huge amount of story to it for every issue it's kind of just like a background ongoing plot you know yeah i mean in terms of books uh there's just two i've been trying to read soon i might listen to the audiobook on one and the other book is still like you know forever being on the wait list because i've been using the library apps to read and listen to audiobooks more often these days one of them is to build a fire like short story by an author named jack london and that's all my to read list or to listen to list there's another book called orange world and other stories by karen russell that's on my to do list i'm on the wait list for that but in the meantime, I did pick up and finish the Invincible series. Okay, okay. I've I've read the <laughs> My joke with that book, um, uh -huh. whenever I talk about it, is I had uh, a couple years back, it just ended. It ended of like a, maybe like what, like five years ago or something like that? Invincible? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it ended recent, recently. Yeah. So I very clearly remember the week the, fin the final issue came out and I like saw it. I picked it up and I was like, my friend works at a comic book store. So I walk mm -hmm. up to them and I like flip through the final issue and I just look up at them and say, man, this is a really bad jumping on point <laughs> yeah no that that that's uh not the best jumping on point <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's like the only thing i remember about that that book like i know like so much about the story itself that i but i've never actually read it but i just remember just just straight faces being like yeah just a really bad strong jumping on point freaking last issue and i'm like oh my god um, yeah I, <laughs> that's, that's great but that's not the, like even the worst way to um pick up a book it's kind of like starting your story with the end you know it'd be it's kind of cool sometimes to read it or experience a story where they tell you what's going to happen and then the story is a, the journey to that point yeah i mean so controversial take i have zero i give zero typically i give zero like actual care to spoilers if you spoil something for me it usually never ruins the experience for me if anything i think getting spoiled enhances my experience right mm, yeah because for me it's it is about like the story and the structure and how we get to certain points because if you t if, I, if i'm watching it and i'm engrossed in something thing and i see them fumble the bag or fumble the ball uh at the end and i'm like man like this just did not work right yeah but if someone had spoiled it for me where it was like oh this is how it's gonna end and then i see how the structure and the story fails that yeah. conclusion on the way there it's not gonna make it worse for me as opposed to like having 
gone to the high and then getting crashed down. It's more of like, okay, I see why this never worked and I appreciate it for that. <laughs> um, and then on the opposite end, when something's like really, really great, I had uh, Infinity War spoiled for me, like Black Panther's death and like Spider-Man's death, like a hundred percent spoiled. Right. Yeah. If you haven't seen those movies, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I mean, you're behind. Oh, well, <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm watching. I was like, I was literally like, like right before I went to that movie so I go in and it's, you know packed crowd of people I'm in the middle of Atlanta so, you know the Black Panther hype down here is real <laughs> And I know this is mm -hmm. coming. Yeah, as it should be. Like, I'm, I'm excited for the next one, you know? Like, yeah. I really oh. don't want to try to watch it that weekend. Oh, 100%. But you, you like, but you, like, you know, I'm I'm in Atlanta in a packed theater, uh, and I know Black Panther's death is coming. Like, I 100%, it's going to happen. And when it does, the theater just, like, erupts with just like anguish and i'm like oh man and, and i was like this is the greatest moment in my theatrical life <laughs> <laughs> just oh seeing that's so crazy everybody <laughs> just being like what no and i'm like <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh that's crazy in the theater i was in it was just dead quiet as everyone was just I guess, quietly taken aback by everyone slowly dying and being turned into dust. What a completely opposite reaction we yeah, had. <laughs> typically, nine, like 900% of the time, I want you guys to stay quiet in the theater. Not like just almost all the time. But like that was like the one time I was like, this is worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man that's great that, that's pretty sweet like you know i really sometimes like you said it doesn't bother me if i get spoiled i feel like that's my experience with watching video essays on youtube all the time i love me a good video essay i think they're like probably 60 percent of the content i'm subscribed to on my youtube right yeah and i don't know if it feels cool hearing like a really good take or anal analytical breakdown of something i am interested in even if i haven't seen it yet because by the time i end up watching it I'll end up taking my own thing from it, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I am excited to keep reading all these comics that I have put off for like ever. Invincible was pretty good. I didn't think it was going to go the way it did. I really liked what the ending, even though I feel like I wish some things were kind of lingered on a little bit more in terms of just exploration of like the world and universe. But these just covered up a lot and it, it, it is what it is. Not to mention like all the other TV show that I'm excited to be watching and then also is either ending or it's about to air you know like tons of anime like blue lock chainsaw man bleach oh yeah um Ooh. mob psycho you know like freaking everything is just updating nowadays yeah so the the main content of this episode is going to be hocus pocus 2 it's <laughs> it's a sequel to the cult classic hocus pocus from like 1993 it came out this year 2022 it was directed by ann fletcher it stars bed midler sarah jessica parker kathy najimi and you know at the time of this episode can be streamed on disney plus I think, uh, what was it? Man, I, I immediately lost my train of thought. Okay, so before, <laughs> before you find it, my biggest complaint about this movie, uh -huh. right? The original came out in 1993. Yep. The new one came out 2022. If it were me, I would have said, look, guys, we know it's coming. Just delay it a year. It's okay. 30 years just is way prettier than 29. <laughs> <laughs> Release it for the 30th anniversary, and we're good. We're Everybody's happy. Everybody who's you know was a kid when they watch the original is kind of sad because they're like oh my god that was 30 years ago but like <laughs> you know it just it looks nicer than being like 20 29 years after the original thing like, no, no no just just wait a year just push it back a few months make it look pretty put the number 30 on it and you're happy <laughs> <laughs> man see that's the thing um we'll get into it but for me this movie doesn't really hold a soft spot in my heart i was born around the time the movie came out and i didn't watch the movie until like years 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 later on the Disney Channel, where it was constantly advertised and almost reoccurringly aired around Halloween, you know? And even then, barely, I think I watched it once, you know, and that's it. I was kind of annoyed at the amount of commercials I got for this movie. I kind of, out of spite, purposely didn't want to watch the movie because of the amount of commercials that were always on Disney Channel for this dumb movie. Oh, man. Yeah. And then eventually, my wife was telling me how much, how much you love this movie. And I was like, really? That movie? That really garbage movie that I hate for no 
actual reason. <laughs> oh, that's oh, all right. Well, let's see how how good this movie actually could be. Because I I found you know I realized it was actually beloved by many people. Yeah. And yeah, it it was a lot of fun watching the original. So that's so that's crazy. First off, uh, but you know I I understand the sentiment because it happened so many times with movies. Um, I was a hundred percent like a hardcore Disney Ch- Friday night Disney Channel movie night kid it was my jam and then they moved it to every weeknight whatever it doesn't matter but you know friday nights especially during halloween i loved it you're talking like hocus pocus under wraps don't look under the bed all the disney channel original films during halloween and well this mm-hmm. one wasn't but this was a theatrical movie but you're talking like man yeah. i loved this movie growing up. Oh, uh, oh yeah that's great and it's funny because i also liked a lot of those disney channel original movies right like my favorite was halloween t- uh, town halloween town duh why did i i i, I forgot the best one of the best ones <laughs> yeah yeah but for some reason my little kid brain was just like this movie i hate it i hate it so much i'm gonna hate this movie for like 16 something years for that's it just because that's, that's <laughs> great so, it's it's our it's crazy looking back on it because obviously if we're going to talk about two i had to go back and watch one obviously also it's halloween season so i, I was going to look at it regard but I, I watched the first one and i'm like man like like yes obviously like i'd be like super you know there's always the super critical eye that i look at things from but i'm like yo like no this movie holds up really well oh it's a delightful movie man i have having just recently been sucked into that like world of a uh, cold classic appreciation from this hocus pocus series like it's so much fun yeah i, I very much like there's just like a there's a lot there's there's a charm that i feel like a lot of more recent uh not only just didn't channel but like kids movies in general i feel like are missing from that era or the eight like 70s to the 90s where it's like there's something about the way that they made movies for kids back in the day where i was like man like it still hits and that might be nostalgia <laughs> people were like oh well, you know you you grew up with these movies so obviously you like them more and i was like i don't mm, i don't know like i for example i didn't grow up with the goonies i don't know i don't know if you grew up with yeah yeah me either nope not uh was did not grow up with the goonies i never really saw that movie until like i was like 17 yeah you know like as like an older person i was like you know what actually this movie actually does is like really well made for you know being a kid's movie from like the 80s or whatever um so it's like weird coming like now looking at it from like a way more modern perspective with more of the aesthetics and tropes that we see nowadays and i'm like yeah like i don't know what it is like i would think that i would dislike this movie more because it's there there it's like there's there's age to it but i feel like that age actually adds credence to a lot of the charm that was present in it if that makes sense Mm -hmm. yeah no i get it like for me you know i I, after saying that i didn't really want to watch this movie for just so many countless years when i watched it with my wife it was really like sweet and kind of nostalgic for that tv movie direct you know feature film for kids feeling from the 90s that i got to just re-experience you know they don't really make movies like this anymore with this level of kind of like cheese to it but like again going back to our previous discussion of rrr i like saying cheesy in a good way yeah i i think it has for me a positive connotations right it was just it was nice it was delightful it made me feel nostalgic for that feeling of childhood yeah i very much very much enjoy the original uh what are your kind of like initial thoughts on the sequel oh um one out of ten because no talking cat oh, i hated that <laughs> the, the fact that they couldn't have a talking cat in this one i don't know why they didn't even try yeah i i was initially gonna be like oh this movie was like eight out of ten i was just waiting for the talking cat it would have been 10 out of 10 perfect and then the movie ended no talking cat one out of ten horrible <sighs> you know what have been really great now in retrospect because i didn't think about it watching the movie like i was kind of really disappointed by the talking cat and usually i'm like why didn't you have this if it were me right if I'm like, hey, you uh-huh. can do a real quick rewrite. What <sighs> the the shop owner? I can't remember his name. Gilbert. Gilbert. Yeah. So if if mm-hmm. it were me and Gilbert was like, don't kill the cat. Like you know, he's just a pet here. And I was like, yo, put that man in that cat. <laughs> yeah. I honestly, that's not. I thought that's where they were going with it. It would have worked so much better because one, I like the actor. He has really. Oh yeah. He has really decent comedic chops, but like uh, his character is entirely wasted. Put him in that cat. <laughs> you know, I didn't feel like his character were wasted, but like. 
he has really strong comedic chops. The first thing I ever seen him in was in the show Veep. And I loved his character in that. He was great. And I ended up seeing him pop up in other things. He is the main character in the show on Apple Plus called um, The After Party. And I think he was pretty good in that one. I would have loved to see him as a talking cat. Disappointing. See, this is why one out of 10. <laughs> horrible movie. You're right. <laughs> no, uh, it's, man, there's so many. Overall, though, like, I think it's decent. Like, it's not bad. But, like, my opinion on this movie is, like, I, it's, it goes back to what I was literally just saying, like, a few, like a few moments ago, where it's, like, there is something that I think that modern kids' movies are missing in comparison to the younger, to the older ones. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's, like, it's hard to explain. It's, like, there's a level of edge that the younger movie, the, the older movies have, right? Now, it's really we're talking about Hocus Pocus here. There's not much edge there. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I guess that's fair. <laughs> but like, okay. So the way I, like, I was trying to describe it to someone, I was like, it's like, if in regards to edge, we're talking like a um, steel butter knife versus like a plastic butter knife. <laughs> it's just safer. <laughs> plastic one is just a little safer. And it doesn't have the weight to it. Where I was like, I was watching the original and I was like, you know, in this, in the older movie, it felt like there's like a forward momentum and an actual threat going on in the film the entire time. Mm -hmm. Right? Even even when they had their little side tangents and little misadventures for the Sanderson sisters, it felt like there's always, it's always moving forward in a way that felt urgent because something was happening in the new one. It was very much like, mm -hmm. Oh, you guys love the Sanderson sisters. You like these quirky adventures. Uh, we have some new characters and we're going to have some fun stuff. We're going to have callback, but it's like, ultimately it's not the, the story isn't focused on there being like a central like threat that needs to be dealt with. And it's more about having fun. Yeah. which I have no qualms with the movie trying to have fun, but it's very much, it does take away from the final product when that's the only purpose, if that makes sense. No, I understand that. When I um Googled Hocus Pocus 2 and went to their Wikipedia page to like grab some information for just, you know, this content of this podcast episode, like the names of the actresses and names of the actors and plot points and this and that, right? Um, on the Wikipedia page, it says this film was received with mixed reviews, praising the cast, performance, humor, and nostalgia, but also criticizing of the plot. And, you know, I think I pretty much agree with you on all your points about the plot needing some work i think i really enjoyed the ending plot motivation of the main sister played by bet miller's character um what was her name again uh winifred winifred right winifred was kind of just being like okay you know what i'm gonna grab total power you know i'm gonna rule the world or the town or whatever and the cost of that was the like love of her sisters which really tied it back to the beginning where we got to see them as little children in like salem and that should have just been the main plot honestly <laughs> My my thing is, I, yeah, I think what it got lost with, in my opinion, is a lot. And I don't know if, he, if he's like a major person behind it. The person who played Mayor Trask. Oh, yeah, yeah. He plays Buster on Arrested Development and yeah. Tony Hale. Tony, yeah. So he, so I don't know if he has like a major part in the production of the film. Kind of feels like he does uh, because it felt like that character was one entirely useless towards the plot. But also like really self-indulgent with like the stupid story line he had oh yeah really was it the was it kind of just like took you out a little bit or something well it was like it, it felt like they were setting him up to be like a sort of not like some sort of antagonist towards the sisters because obviously they have like a history with him right mm -hmm. but it was more of like uh he's like a goofy aside like <laughs> he really cares about these caramel apples and yeah i see what you're saying i think that worked for me because as the movie went on i kind of just started liking his goofy character but it does i see what you mean you know it, for for me it's like i the one the motivation for them to want supreme power doesn't seem there other than just like having to have it happen uh uh, they set up mm -hmm. Trask and that he has a very immediate descendant in the future. And yeah, like there is no, again, there's no like driving conflict the entire time. Like you're talking about G uh, Gilbert's plot is him with mm -hmm. um, the Sanderson sisters or Billy bit with Billy Butcherson. Yeah. With Billy Butcherson, uh -huh. uh, Gilbert's plot with Billy Butcherson. They're just joking around. The mayor's plot is just him trying to get a caramel apple and the main Sanderson sisters and the, 
the new girl's whole plot is just them like going on like crazy mishap adventures mm-hmm. right yeah yeah I, I i feel like part of the plot of them just wanting to grab ultimate power would have made more sense to me and i think i might have preferred that if when they had come back we you know winifred or one of the sanderson sisters was just kind of like i'm tired of being resurrected and us failing we need to end this either live forever or like stop or something you know but i as you said it kind of just went and on hijinks over the course of the movie which was a lot of fun yeah. but yeah that, that takes away a little bit from the, the initial like story yeah so i was i was thinking so if it were me like you know, i very much would have like expected or hoped that the mayor was kind of gonna be like gonna like fumble his way into being like in and the girls pretty much like immediately were like we can't beat these witches so like we're just gonna distract them for like 12 hours right yeah no that that makes sense like, that, that's <laughs> yeah. pretty much their whole entire mo the entire thing okay we we trapped them okay we tricked them like we're trying to like make it so that they don't do this thing like they're not trying to like kill them or whatever right yeah on some level i kind of like that because it felt like they were they actually felt like bumbling teenagers where they're like way over their heads and they're not sure what to do you know yeah like you know in the, in the original movie they like straight up try to murder the witches they're like stick them like we trick them into a furnace and we burn them alive and this one it's like okay so if we trick them into thinking that the cvf has potions that they can use <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it was funny it was kind of like uh, they're panicking trying to think on their feet of something and they were just flying by the seat of their pants yeah you know? <laughs> but like so if if the forward momentum was just like okay we replaced the mayor's plot with him finding out that the witches are back and him very much being into like his family lineage and being like oh no we have to stop them and get, try to get like the town folks to go after them then it's like mm-hmm. oh now the witches have like an actual reason to want to have supreme power right yeah honestly gilbert's character right the character of gilbert should have just been the mayor and have like uh immediately tony hale's character just be like his grandfather or something oh looks like his descendants are running the town now and they've gone all out with halloween you would have to rearrange some plots but like it would give gilbert i guess more of a role in the movie as both comedic hijinks person doing adventures with like you know billy the zombie but also kind of be involved with the plot more so you know what i mean but hey that's just kind of like hindsight and me trying to figure out a fun way to bring the plot and come up with a different idea for the movie you know yeah yeah, pretty much and like you know and again the biggest real issue like we mentioned no cat (laughs) yeah i mean come on talking cat it's a kid's movie i need a talking cat i need one talking sidekick adventure cat you know but like yeah so i don't don't know it's just like i'm watching the original and you're talking about you open up with a girl with a girl getting killed and her son her her brother getting turned into a cat for all eternity and like that's that's like some serious like darkness dark shit (laughs) some serious like uh, just a tiny bit of edge right there you know yeah no I, i like that tiny bit of edge because like you know all this fun aside, all the fun of witches and our pop culture ideas and stuff, like, if we're going to be serious about it, kind of like they did a little bit in the first Hocus Pocus, like, in history, I mean, there weren't really witches. They were just innocent women who were burned by, like, crazy hive mind thoughts at the time. Like, yeah. it, they were murdered. It was, like, the murder of a bunch of innocent women, and it, that's awful. <laughs> yeah. You know? And I and I get that they were trying to, like, go with the whole entire, like, make the Sanderson sisters, like, more sympathetic because we know more about the history of witches and it's more like common knowledge right mm-hmm. but it would have been interesting to keep that like to have the dynamic be that maybe the sanderson sisters are we're like they were the kind of witches that were like the myths were told about and that the main character because mm-hmm. she obviously practices uh like a certain level of witchcraft in the film that like that mm-hmm. was like she was more in line with the women that the sanderson sisters actions at, and ultimately ultimately hurt right yeah no that would have been cool so like it's like oh the witch trials happened because yes because the sanderson sisters but because they placed such a horrible example of what witches are that of course that they went after all these innocent women and stuff like that and that puts them still as antagonists and it's like at the Mm -hmm. end of the movie they're like oh no but we have to have like a a pseudo redemption for them at the end (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah i mean the 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 plot of the hocus pocus 2 could have definitely Definitely had some work done but you know it feels like considering the place is going to be you know streaming which 
is Disney Plus. And I guess the level of production and money put into these kind of movies, because there's just been a lot of um, nostalgia caching movies coming out on Disney Plus, right? Like Or like not even movies, just projects like the Mighty Ducks sequel and, you know, a, bunch, a few other things this included. I was kind of hesitant at first to watch this. Like Maya, my wife really loves Hocus Pocus, the original movie. And she was really hesitant on watching the second one because she's like, I don't know if I want to watch them, maybe just ruin this movie I really like. So I was kind of the person to see if it's good enough to be like, oh, no, hey, I think you should watch it. I think you'll like it. I think if anyone liked the first one, they'll probably like this one, even though it has some issues with yeah. it. I don't think there's, you know, the people, people like to be like, oh, my God, this new version ruined the original. And I'm like, eh, this one's more of, if, if, if I ever agreed with that sentiment, which I never do, I would more be on the camp of like, eh, like, you could watch it. It's not like a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes... It could be a bad time, but this movie isn't. <laughs> yeah, no, this movie is acceptable. You can grab some popcorn, some candy, just watch it at home, chill, have a, neat, a decent little spooky, not well, not spooky, more like a spoopy kind of night. <laughs> I'm, I think my wife would describe this movie as a comfy, soft Halloween movie. <laughs> yeah, that, that's 100% what that is. Um, and, <laughs> Which is funny. Uh, what were you saying? <laughs> no, uh, it's ultimately, yeah, like I I think, oh man, there was one really cool bit that I like, and it's sad because it is just a nostalgia bait, mm -hmm. but it's like when Gilbert was telling about like, oh yeah, I was there that night, and then they show clips from the original, and I was like, oh man, this is such a cool moment, and I really like how they integrated the clips from the original, and like made it feel like he, um, he was there. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, uh, this might be a good point to talk, talk about the things we really liked about the movie, because that was one of the points I really liked about the movie, the way they... um incorporated some of those clips from the yeah. like, original i like I, I think i was a big fan of initially was just them breaking out into song as soon as they are resurrected man i love that part <laughs> that's i i okay yeah I, I like i like i like their musical bits regardless of how indulgent i thought they were um, oh no yeah they were pretty indulgent but like i'm a sucker for the the campy musical bits from the original you know when they just break out into song on stage <laughs> and this one was great I was hoping to see. Yeah, I mean, Bet Midler is Bet Midler, so I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping to see what they were going to do with it because I was like, oh, they're going to have to have a musical moment in this movie. And then they had two the in initial resurrection of the Sanderson sisters. And then when they were on, on the stage with the other um, drag show, well, right? There were, there were some drag queens there. There were some just regular, like, uh, people dressed up. And then there was, like, I think the people who won were just, like, sexy Sanderson sisters. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I looked away for a minute because um, I was doing stuff while I was watching some of this movie. But yeah, it seemed like the ones that won were just like the younger like actresses or some kind or whatever. But then I like the, what is it, the snide comments that there was another group on stage with them and Bed Miller's character was just like, lose the teeth. And she's like, oh, all right, all right. And I was like, oh, that's kind of fun. I like that little sassy back and forth between each other, you know? Yeah, that, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, and then the, I like the song they ended up choosing for their musical moment and the, the way they did the the whole kind of flash mob dancing sequence throughout the streets i, I was I, I i was questionable about the song choice but i ultimately loved it it was pretty good i also really liked i liked that they had doug jones back as billy butcherson they didn't need to obviously because yeah. like you know it's a guy in a, out in a mask and oh yeah yeah my wife was not going to watch the second movie period if it didn't have billy butcherson <laughs> that's her favorite character <laughs> but yeah i'm glad that they got the same actor back to do it yeah i i know one bit of trivia for his character in the first movie which i thought was pretty cool in the original those were real moths that came out of his mouth when he like opened up his mouth oh yeah they like put like a little pot like a little like pouch in his mouth yeah they made some like um special effects like kind of pockets to have the mouth or the moth perfectly be fine inside of his mouth yep. but the thing that gets me is they had to do that multiple times like it took multiple takes so his character just had moths in his mouth multiple times as he had that sounds so uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but it's it's cinema man it's practical effects it's beautiful <laughs> I mean, yeah, hundred percent. He's he's probably probably what happened. I can just imagine is that they did that. The, the moths were perfectly fine, and then he like goes to do the take, and the moths just don't come out. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's like there, like I just got moths in my mouth, just like chilling. <laughs> they just, <laughs> just stick them out. Just, just poke them out yeah. with your tongue, dude. 
Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> no, that would. I, I like Billy Butcherson being back. I I'm not too. Uh, I've seen people like critique the new actresses as energetic as like the Sanderson sisters or the pre or the old cast. But like I liked I liked them as characters. Mm -hmm. um, at least the main two. Yes. The third the, the the third girl. I wish they would have done more with, and they would have leaned more into that actual like story element between them. Oh, the the rift between their friendship group. Yeah, like I wish they did more with her. But I ultimately like I enjoyed the main two and I also enjoyed the the third girl's boyfriend who was just absolutely just dumb as bricks oh dude i love the i love a good himbo character you know yeah he, I, I don't want to say he's a himbo because he's pretty young you know yes but like a himbo character in media in general it's great you know what i'm saying yeah the fact that he's like i didn't know i was being mean i was just making conversation and i was like oh my god sweet boy <laughs> bless your heart <laughs> yeah i was like oh man you just you just mean well you know you just you're trying your best it, it's fine you're so awkward jock yeah yeah like like another good himbo character is jason mendoza from the good place you know what i mean oh my god that's himbo character yeah yeah and i mean that in a positive context it's just like a fun idea and i like jason mendoza's character and the good jason mendoza is the best <laughs> yeah yeah so like i really liked his just naive innocence and it was really sweet and it made like a bit of a, a nice comic relief moments when he showed up oh. <laughs> like he was being chased by the senators and sisters yeah i, I like <laughs> i thought i was gonna hate the stupid Roombas, but the fact that they were kind of like little animals mm. made me love them. Yeah, I also thought initially that I was like, oh, really? They're doing the Roomba thing? Fun. And then they kind of built on it. I'm like, okay, no, I kind of like it. They're kind of <laughs> cute. I actually, it was funny because I like I hated the Roombas, but then I was I, I thought I was going to hate the Roombas, but I ultimately hated the Swiffer more. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, get the Swiffer out of here. Just give her a freaking mop. And there was like bubbles coming out of her Swiffer and I was like, no, this is dumb. <laughs> I was like, I, I thought I hated the Roombas, but it's actually that freaking Swiffer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, man, it was just, it was a lot to like. I even like when Gilbert and Billy Butcher were both just out around the town becoming like the best of friends, you know? Yeah. It was like they almost, it was almost kind of like they went on a fun date night while there was just the potential of everything going to shit. <laughs> no, no. Um... I mean, there's just a lot to like about this movie, even though it had its issues, you know? Like, yeah, it's, I think it was quite delightful. It's a, it's a perfectly charming and fun family movie. Like, the my literal critiques are, like, the first movie had, like, some bit of, like, plot relevance and, like, stakes. And the second one was like, ah, yeah, fun time, though. And I'm like, you know what? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I don't know. So, for me, I was really hesitant going into this because I don't have that just backlog of appreciation yeah. to the first one you know like I, I didn't grow up with it um it wasn't like a movie that just i watch every year i do kind of now because my wife loves that movie and um but this movie was pretty good man i i just it was a good time you know i didn't think going into it it was going to be bad but i was just like pleasantly delighted by the time it was ended all right so i'm gonna ask a question because we're talking about stuff that we did grow up and we watch on like a yearly basis um what is a f mm -hmm. halloween slash fall movie or show that you like just that's like a hundred percent like that is of, of course going on in my household between like during this time Ooh, do that i i don't know like i'm trying to think of a, a good movie that i would probably watch all the time in the fall because oh. like i don't think my family really did that too much like we watched a lot of movies but not like reoccurring movies every year you know what i mean yeah, yeah like one of my favorite shows as a kid was cursed cowardly dog and they would do that show or play that show on uh, marathons usually around halloween because it you know it's a horror kid show so that one has a special place in my heart but in terms of a sp specific movie i don't think i have one that i can immediately like say off the top of my head yeah, so, so again i was asking because like you know like they always you know they're always replaying like similar movies or tv shows like the specials i do remember like growing up just watching like you know they would always rerun oh this this episode had a halloween episode so we have to play it kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. oh yeah no for sure i mean one tradition my wife and i are trying to build that we do watch yearly 
is over the garden wall around Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh, I was gonna say the exact same show. <laughs> yeah. What, dude? I love that show so much. Over the garden wall is like freaking amazing. Oh, uh, it's so good. I think it's. Oh, uh, I would love to do that one of these years. Like eventually, hopefully, this podcast can keep going in a year's time. But like, man, I love that show so much. It did so many things just perfectly. You know? I mean, I look. I'm just saying, November's coming up. We could do it for November. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. Oh, we could do it for November. We, you know, Sandman, our episode about Sandman will eventually come out. You know, I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, no, Over the Garden Wall. Oh my gosh, that, that which would be great for an, uh, uh, a Thanksgiving release because it came out during Thanksgiving. Um, mm-hmm. And it's also much shorter than some of the shows we've currently already have reviewed you know a hundred percent but oh man over the garden wall is so good if you haven't watched it just go watch it without us do saying anything other than it's great yeah go listen to the soundtrack i love the soundtrack i've listened to that soundtrack like a few different times now you know phenomenal music but Mm -hmm. i still imagine the frog singing the opening to that show you know the his voice is ingrained in my head it's such a good opening oh, i love it though so, but you know just people have their their preferences in regards to like i know a lot a lot of my friends are of course like big advocates of you watch nightmare before christmas at before during halloween season but then also during christmas because it's both so I, mm-hmm. yeah no that, that would be a cool movie to do if, if december if we're not swamped we'd it would be we could do a whole like nightmare before christmas yeah. release or something but yeah i know a lot of people have that one specifically for like a nostalgia treasured memory watching them with yeah. your, their family you know it, it's a good movie yeah and then i've i've for a little bit i watched like Coraline and Paranorman. oh Paranorman. if anyone hasn't seen that movie really good and it's a shame that movie didn't do better sh- that, look this is a shame that entire studio didn't do better like that's true god they made some really good movies and really creative movies. like it made some really good movies except for i would argue the missing link um and it's a real shame that they're like, we're going to live action, guys. And I'm like, that's not why I watch you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, oh man, at the same time, like, I get it because of the way they do stop motion and how much money oh my God. goes into it, you know? Like, uh, it's it's kind of like why I appreciated watching that movie, The House. I know you, you weren't super into it, but I think just stop motion animation should be highlighted and appreciated more often, you know, because of just how much work it goes into it. Yeah, no, it's a hundred percent like such a labor of love and you got to be like super heavily invested and not expect a great return. And that's just not good for a business, unfortunately. Like it's really just difficult to just make your return on that. But like they were such like the, the work they did and the pioneering they did for that industry is so crazy. But I mean, I shouldn't talk about that. That's entirely separate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in and of itself. but yeah no i just you know it's spooky season just talk about all the movies that like i ah, mean like i know that mm-hmm. the, i'm gonna watch the werewolf by night by the marvel marvel studio oh dude i really want to watch that like i'm excited to watch that it's just i've only heard good things um i I keep on fighting the urge to watch the monsters because I want to watch it because it's the monsters, but also I don't want to watch it because it looks like trash. (laughs) (laughs) See, that's how I feel about, well, I don't think it looks like trash, but that's how I worry about the Wednesday TV show that's coming out. Okay. Wednesday Adams. Because I really like the Adams family and I like who they cast as the characters. I feel like they needed to be a little bit more pale, (laughs) but just a little bit more just extremely white makeup on them <laughs> but i don't know i i'm excited but i'm also like i hope it's good i just don't know what to expect from that movie or sorry the tv show because i really like the adams movie i i was 100 percent sold on that show until they showed me fester oh Rich, uh, what is it richard armiston's character yeah um mm, that's mm. <laughs> that's a choice yeah it, i because i really like oh, what was it guzman something guzman luis guzman yep luis guzman yep yeah i really like luis guzman i think he's probably a good choice for gomez i am cautiously optimistic for wednesday when it eventually comes on netflix yeah i'm yeah, that, that one looks like fun doesn't it come out in november which is such a mess that's such a mess it does i saw a trailer for it the other day and it's in november i'm like wow really november okay cool i mean do what you do you know it's um 
a movie mine and I watched last year, which was a lot of fun. It's a, it's a bit dated in some ways, but have you ever seen Elvira, Mistress of the Dark? The movie? Or like, the, I, I know of the character. <laughs> the movie, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew of the character. I would say that movie was pretty fun to watch as a good Halloween comedy movie. Again, it's a bit dated in some ways, like... There's many points in the story where she kind of just like gets kind of assaulted casually by men, which is a real bummer. But at the same time, I think she's a lot of fun. And that's a movie. It's a really funny in like so many different ways. Like it, it, it's just a good watch, man. I really liked it. Surprisingly, you know, I'd say give it a shot. All right, we'll do. Yeah. And hey, it's a good time of the year to do yeah. it. You know, <laughs> too bad we can't talk about it in time to do another release because it's just too much shit going on. Too much stuff. We're moving too slowly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, editing takes a while. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm no, no, I ain't following you. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I have anything more to say about Hocus Pocus 2. It was a fun movie. I'd say watch it, you know? Yeah. There's a lot. You can watch this holiday season or this Halloween season. And that's a pretty fun one to watch with, you know, on the couch with a blanket and some popcorn. Yeah, definitely just, you know, enjoy, enjoy an evening, just hanging out, having some fun, go to a Halloween party, dress up or something. Which I, I guess this is actually a good point to bring up. So we actually did get one piece of mail sent to us. Oh, okay. It was just a quick question. It was someone asking, uh, let me see if I can pull that up. Why are Franco's takes such garbage? <laughs> the answer is, I have garbage taste <laughs> let's see right here it says by user jody jody how do you guys choose the movies or tv shows that you end up watching on the podcast and talking about on the podcast and i would say to that we kind of just wing it <laughs> yeah the, the the name of the podcast and the way we decide things are no or are, are no coincidence we we really do just pick something <laughs> yeah yeah i mean we kind of had a list going and like there's things i wouldn't mind still revisiting on that list but sometimes we just kind of like are excited to talk about something that just came out or is coming out and we're like let's talk about that one you know yeah or if something's been out for a couple months and it just it just now really got on our radars we'll go back and revisit it um, yeah yeah but it really depends like what we're just in the like oh i have x amount of time to kill do we have do you have this amount of time to kill that we can because diving into sandman is an entirely different beast than watching a two-hour movie yeah yeah <laughs> like it's a that's a like hours of content and so much to discuss versus like today's topic of conversation which is hocus pocus 2 which is you know two hours movie max that is a fun you know just enjoyable watch and doesn't necessarily have as much depth as maybe sandman but it also has depth in its own way you know what i mean yeah but it's also much shorter it's just like a lot easier to digest certain pieces of media and talk about it than it is to just like there's a lot of time commitment and a lot of planning and scheduling between us and it's just a matter of like hey you know at the, at just you know like oh have you watched this movie oh yeah i have okay let's do that <laughs> yeah yeah like um something on i put on our list that i really Really want to eventually get to that recently came back up to me is world of tomorrow by don hartsfield it was his short film that was on vimeo for the longest time like i wouldn't have mind supported him by paying those like money but then i found out that he uploaded the first part of that short film on his youtube channel so then i was like oh that's great and then i found out you could just become a member on his youtube channel and watch the entire thing and i'm like oh well that makes it a lot easier i'll probably do that in the future hopefully we can have an episode in discussing that like short film yeah because it's like it's the length of a movie so it it's fine it like works out for the kind of like is that a short film then if it's the length of a movie well it's it was a short film at first right it's like part one part two and then it eventually became part three uh, which combined ended up becoming the length of a movie yeah. that makes sense that makes sense that makes sense yeah and the thing he's really famous for is rejection by don hertzfield it's got like if you see it you recognize it you know it's just google it on youtube i'll put a link in the description but yeah once you see that rejected by don hertzfield you'll be like oh it's this guy <laughs> real quick this is nothing to say about anything regarding the actual topic mm -hmm. but you like it's just a funny uh linguistic thing right mm -hmm. where you're like google it on youtube and i was like uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i was just like it's like oh man that's like it's like yeah i'm gonna skype someone you're doing a zoom meeting <laughs> Yep. Like, I'm sorry. Google means search now and Skype means video call. I mean, nowadays you just be like, oh, just Discord somebody. <laughs> that sounds weird. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, but but yeah, that's how we basically that's how we pick things. We kind of just wing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, so far it's, so far it's worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hey, thank you for listening to this episode of the Just Pick uh, Just Just Pick Something podcast. If you haven't seen Hocus Pocus two, go watch it. It's a really delightful movie. If you want to send us an email sharing your opinions and thoughts about anything we talked about in this episode, you could just send it to jpspmailbag at gmail.com. It's in the video and also will be in the descriptions. Please include a username and keep your response is polite it takes us about a month to upload an episode so i expect a delay in response time but hey the intro and outro song of this episode is vhs streams by sean ivers link in the description thanks for listening and until next time